morning everyone, my name is Crystal. Alexa, what's the time please? It's 11.09am. Alexa, good morning. Good morning. Right, so it's Wednesday morning. I've just come back from walking my Chihuahua Max from across the Rochester Riverside field. Um, I'm not going anywhere this morning. Um, as I was going out of the building, I looked up at Rochester Railway Station. The station looked empty. Um, the reason I went into Gillingham last Friday was because I wanted to put some money into the Barclays Bank because I was overdrawn. I haven't got money to spend willy-nilly. I have high electricity and gas bills, which is, is pay-as-you-go, but if you don't top the meter up with a large amount of money, you just the electric will just switch itself off. Um, and, you, you know, I like to keep it topped up so that doesn't happen. So I went out to Gillingham last Friday, wasn't it? That's the last time I actually went out to actively try and um, put some money into the Barclays Bank because I was overdrawn. I went into Gillingham, I got the train, the, the Barclays Bank had been shut down, it wasn't there, it was taken over by an estate agent. The post office within WH Smith, that was shut down. Um, I went into the library, Gillingham Library, to return a book that Alan Carr book that somebody had reserved and wanted, so I had to, so I returned that book to Gillingham Library. Seeing, I would have gone into the pound shop and done some shopping, but because that would have been pointless carrying bags of shopping right through Gillingham into Chatham, so I did my shopping in Chatham, I put the money into the bank in the Barclays Bank in Chatham, and I used the post office in Chatham to put £25 on my electric card. I don't have a key. Um, today, I'm keeping hold of my money. And I'll go, I've got to go and get my repeat prescription at some point. I'm meeting somebody at some point. And I'm saving my money because if I spend it willy-nilly, then I'm not going to have anything left to get food and the electric and gas. So I'm not just going out and spending money for the sake of it. I also want to get myself a drone. A drone, which is a camera that flies above in the air. I want to try and see what a drone looks like. I also need to make get a new camera because the camera on this phone is playing up. It takes me ages to do a video, sometimes ten times which is annoying, so I need to update my camera so that I can upload videos to YouTube a lot quicker because this is very, very slow. This old Samsung phone is very, very slow. The quality is poor, so I want to get a better camera so I can upload better videos and hopefully get more views and subscriptions because it is poor quality because it's an old Samsung phone. I haven't got vast amounts of money, I haven't got a recording studio, I haven't got a professional camera, I use my second hand mobile phone to upload videos to YouTube. At one time my father bought me a tower computer, which somebody got the benefit of at Victoria Road when they took it over, because my dad left my tower computer behind in the house. Also my old Xbox and a pink DVD recorder with remote and my bed either got sold or given away. So when I started my flat at Lansdowne Court, I had a cheap put-you-up bed that my dad had bought me for 20 quid that had piss stains on it and a cheap picnic table that came out of Tesco's when it was open in Chatham as my main table. Right? So my dad had effectively given all my belongings away, either to charity or to who God knows who, and I started off my first flat with fuck all in it. Nothing in it. But a 
plastic picnic table and a cheap put-you-up bed that he bought from someone, which was her grandma's bed, and the grandma had pissed on it. The mattress. It's horrible the way I was treated. It was disgusting and it was allowed to go on because the police allowed my father to abuse me over a number of years. I'm not going to harp on about it, but that's the truth. It's not a case of being a dog. It's, it's, it's a parent abusing a child, which is a totally different kettle of fish. And it's disgusting how people put you into that. Oh, it's a dog. It's, it's a dog. We kicked, punched and raped a dog. It's really funny, isn't it? Be ashamed of yourselves. It's disgusting. I mean, if they do that to a child and a human being, God knows what they do do to their dog, these abusers. Absolutely outrageous. They're just animals. They're disgusting. They should be in cells. And they're subjected to the treatment I've been treated to. My abusers. That should be their punishment. That was the, uh, in the old days of the Bible, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So what is done unto me should have been done unto them, shouldn't it? <laughs> I just get on with my life, I ignore them, I think they're funny, I think they're childish, I think they're cruel, I think they're, they're absolutely rats that need um, exterminating. But every day they think they can boss me about, tell me what to do and subject me to inhumane treatments and I'm not fucking having it anymore. I said I'm not fucking having it anymore. I've got enough money to feed myself and I've got clothes to wear and I fucking am a human being. And anyone treating me less than that will get completely ignored. So, this morning, I took Max out for a walk, as I usually do, throwing rubbish out in the communal bin. Nobody was in front of me, nobody was behind me. No dogs screaming near my front door this morning either. And I got onto the field, and all there was was two large women, two very large ladies, walking together with a Labrador off the lead, a sandy Labrador. Two large ladies with a sandy Labrador, talking really loudly, shouting to each other and yelling at the dog. I just walked across the field, away from them, and all else I could see was one man with a big, huge black Labrador. And that was it really, a builder with a white helmet looking at the Rochester Riverside sign. And builders going up and down in and out of that, those back flats they're building. There was a woman in the same colour top as her dog. So there's a woman with dark brown hair sat outside Costa Coffee in a top that was the same colour as her big large dog. She matched the dog. She had the same colour clothes on as the dog as the dog's coat colour. I walked home, got into my flat, I've made myself a cup of coffee. While I was outside I had messages from Flirt Finder, someone coming from Hastings, Secret Adventurer 47. I asked them, have you met anyone off of Flirt Finder? I've not met anyone. You're the only one I'm talking to. I really want to meet you. Right? All that I've been seeing on the field is that Charlie, the guy with the bucket hat and, and he's got no teeth and he's 61. He's six or seven years older than me. That's all I see. And I've told 
Charlie where I stand. I don't want him touching me. I don't mind talking. I don't mind being a friend. He told me he was a bachelor. A bachelor. A bachelor is a man that lives by himself and he doesn't want women. He likes living on his own. So he started to like hold my hand and kiss me and he's done it to other women and some women are touchy-feely but I'm not and I said please I don't want you to hold my hand I don't want you to kiss me and he keeps doing it so I, it's best you stay away from somebody like that and not encourage that behaviour he's a nice chap and as a friend yes there's someone to chat to but I don't want him touching me I like to get to know someone over some months before I let them touch me and intimately kiss me. And I certainly don't want an audience outside. Some people like that. They like to kiss and cuddle and touch each other's private parts outside. But I don't. I don't like that. I think loving someone is personal. Slobbering over someone in public is okay. But it doesn't appeal to me. Yesterday I went to the co-op. And I got some raspberry blondies. Raspberry blondies. There's a snack with my coffee. I've got some wagon wheels. I got some mashed potato. And I got some ravioli. So I was going to have... Some mashed potato, some chicken, and a bit of ravioli on the side. Right? So I went out to the co-op yesterday and I got food to top up my fridge until I get my Tesco home delivery this week. We also got two bottles of Ribena Light. Ribena. Ribena used to come in glass bottles. These are plastic, much safer. We also got some Mr. Kipling Six Jerry Cherry Bake Wheels, which is advertising the Minions. So I got a newspaper yesterday. I went into the co-op. I'm fine. I can look after myself. And remember, it's my mum, my mum Jennifer, that's got a court summons for the council tax. Not me, I had a nasty letter saying that they was going to take benefit, uh, uh, take money out of my benefit if I didn't reply to a debt that is 15 years old. 15 years old, I actually found the letter yesterday. So yes, my mum's got her worries and troubles, and so have I. I've got HM Customs and HM Revenue and Customs. Well, they've actually they've actually knocked half of it off. They're now asking for six hundred and sixty-two pounds seventy-three. You must act now, you still owe 66273. So I've got this. They're trying to pursue my elderly mother for council tax. And they've sent her a court summons. I've got this. This isn't to my mum, because my mum, um, Anthony, is not my mother's son. My brother is dead, Dylan. So this is about Anthony from 2008 which is 15 years ago child tax credit overpayment from 2008 no word of a lie Anthony is not Jennifer's son Anthony is my son
And I'm certainly not an old hag either. I've had someone this morning saying they like me in my boots and my tights. BX91AG, DM tax credits. So they've taken over half of it off. Is that a real HM Revenue and Customs letter? They're trying to say that the period ended even in 2014. That's nearly 10 years ago. My mum hasn't got children from 2005. Her last child was born in 1975. My last child was born in 2005. It's no good mixing up people's records, you're all going to get into trouble. What they've done to me is disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. It's evil. Trying to hide things that were covered up from 2008. Trying to make out that Anthony is my mother's son. And he's my son. And I'm not an old lady. And I appreciate Charlie, 61 years old, right? He's like chasing after me like a dog sniffing a bottom. And I'm not interested. I'm not interested. I've told him. You have to fight. It's your personal preference. You can't force yourself on somebody. If they don't want you, they don't want you. You've just got to accept it and move on. But some people can't take no for an answer. I don't want... I want to choose my own partner. And, and to be honest, I, I've heard some really horrific stories through the internet with sex trafficking about young girls having to sleep with elderly, greasy, fat, overweight men and they've had their virginity taken away by some big fat monster because they've been sex trafficked. I was taken away from my kids and I was forced to sleep with my father, okay? And I don't want to sleep with dirty, ugly old men, thank you. See you later.